car audio, etc., is proudly supported by Auto Sound and Security. Good morning guys, how's it going? James here from Cardio Etc. You know that stuff that I took out of that MR2 on Monday I think it was the other day? Well, I'm installing some of it today into the ladies uh, 1997 Volkswagen Golf Cabriolet I think is it called? Cabriolet. So I assume that's just basically an old convertible version of the Golf. So what are we doing? We're doing the stereo, the CDA9887 I believe it was. The Alpine Type-X components in the front. We've got a woofer location and a tweeter location even though you could theoretically fit a four inch up here. It's even the factory one's just got a little tiny tweeter and a big plate so we're going to do a similar thing. And then we're also installing that Alpine Type-R 10 inch subwoofer with a new amplifier. So the reason we're doing this, this subwoofer, this box, we're installing with this, this Alpine PDR M65. So the reason we're doing that is because uh, she has got the other car that I mentioned in the previous video, the Jaguar, and she wants that to have a really banging sound system. So I've told her, those PDX amplifiers that I took out, those things are timeless and they will always be great. So let's hold on to those, stick those in the Jaguar, and then we're gonna go for a new stereo, new speakers, and a new subwoofer setup in the Jag. And this, her other one, this is like a sort of her daily driver just down to the shops sort of thing and the Jag's like the long road trip car um, this one's going to get the basic sound system and the road trip car is going to get the banging one so that's what I'm doing today um, hopefully Grant comes in a bit later on to give me a hand maybe with the speakers but I'm going to start off on the stereo and amplifier side of things here's the factory stereo piece of junk so that's going to come out I'm thinking I'm probably going to just install the amplifier under the seat here because it makes sense and then obviously the subwoofer from the boot in the back there and I spent a bit of time yesterday actually um, cleaning up that subwoofer installation because this sub was real real dirty before I removed the uh, rubber rings from it and I even removed the rubber boot from around here it's hard to tell on camera but this piece here is rubber not um, ferro and if you remember from the MR2 video that piece of rubber had all that I didn't re really didn't know what it was it looked a lot like you know calcified I don't know residue of some kind so I took that rubber boot off which wasn't easy and I washed it and cleaned it all up and also I read and I've also um, worked on the box a wee bit as well because there was so much dust in that box I'm going to insert a picture I took a couple because uh, whoever did the install yeah they did not care about leaving dust in that box so I cleaned it all out removed all the Dacron vacuumed it cleaned it out and then also there were a couple of sections of carpet missing from the back so I've just inserted a rectangle of carpet there and a rectangle of carpet there. It's not a perfect job, I know, but it's good enough just because it looks better than um, bare wood, you know. And then the wolf is going to go back in this box. So that's what I've got uh, to do today, guys. Let's start by getting the head unit out. So these old Volkswagens, they're like Audis, they take these funny uh, knife looking shaped keys. Um, normally you would use two, one goes in here. Oh, wait, sorry, there but you can see this side of the stereo is actually already popped out for some reason so all I need to do is stick it in this side, hopefully get it the right way around sometimes that can be a bit temp let's try this way a bit temperamental <clears throat> ah okay possibly the okay well maybe I didn't even need the key possibly the uh, little tabs on the side were already bent and it just pops out alright cool good enough so we got ISO plugs and an aerial and that's it. Huh, where's, oh there's the CD changer plug there on top. Because there is a CD changer in the boot that I've already unplugged. I'll get that wiring out. Speaker wires, power wires, aerial. This will hopefully be nice and easy. And I don't have to do a microphone either because I'm doing that CD player that she already has. Let's have a look at how they've, oh they have soldered it. I always um, look at how band expanders have been installed because Half the time they're either using scoge locks or they've just twisted it around and taped over it. But these people actually did a good job and they soldered it. Whenever I'm doing a European car, 
like a Volkswagen or an Audi, I like to, uh, once I've got the stereo out, start by testing and seeing what powers I have. Just because the European ones more commonly have CAN bus and they don't have analog powers that you need. But um, this is quite an old one, so it should be all right. They always have permanent, which is there. Nope, unless I don't have a ground. That should be live. It is, so it just means that the aerial isn't grounded properly if I can get it from the cigarette lighter but not there. Okay, Okay. so that's the permanent. That one, there's the ground. Let's see if we have accessory. It's always the big one, isn't it? Yep. Listen to this chime, by the way. Turn accessory on. Cool, that works. And uh, is this one illumination or is this? Yep, we've got illumination. And then the only one left is this one up the top, but I'm probably not going to need that. Nine times out of ten, the wires on the top of an ISO block are something to do with a CAN bus or something else that you don't really need in a stereo install. And so that's fine. Where is the aerial on this, by the way? I honestly don't even know where the aerial in this thing is. It didn't have AM when I tested it, but we'll see what we get now that we've got that band expander out of line. Alright, cool. I'm going to, uh, now do I need to run any RCAs? I do. I was just thinking about the wiring and I had to pause for a moment because I was wondering what I was going to do about the uh, the Type-X speaker crossovers because obviously they're not the style like Type-R's, we can just chuck the woofer in and then chuck the tweeter in with the inline crossover. They're the big bulky one with an in and two outs. So um, I popped this tweeter out, which by the way just, just popped up, and it's got this style of wiring. So there's an in and out. So two of those wires there will be coming from the deck and then two of them will go to the woofer. So as soon as you unplug the woofer wires, the woofer will no longer have sound. Which is good because it means I can put the crossover up in behind here somewhere and all the wiring is already here and done. I don't have to run anything extra through the door or anything like that. We're all good there. So I can just go ahead and wire the head unit up in this location and not have to worry about any extra wiring except for some RCAs and a remote wire coming out. So my job's starting to look nice and easy. Well, nice and simple anyway. I've figured out how I want to do things. So I just need to solder these uh, wires for the head unit to some ISO plugs to plug into there. Have some RCAs and, and a remote wire dropping out in the corner there and then I can run them. And let's get the head unit done first. I'll chuck a wee time lapse on, we'll get that out of the way and then I'll move on to the amplifier stuff. And I have already got an idea as to how I'm gonna do that. All right, let's chuck this unit in. Wiring's done. RCAs and remote wire already done. I've just done that real quick right now. It's popping out there. And I took the uh, glove box out. Ooh, floating glove box. And we've got a wee aerial adapter, so let's check this in. So, RCA's plug into the subwoofer output, obviously. Power harness, aerial adapter, plugs into there. Let's try and get all these wires in here and tuck it all down because Volkswagens always, always, always have very little space in them for wiring. Really annoying, but you know. Let's see if we can get this to click in. Oh, no, we're not fitting yet. Oh, there we go. I think I got it clicked in. There we go. The chicken still goes. Still good. Sweet. That's that problem. I just had to get him behind the heater there. There we go. Still pretty bad reception, but I think that's the car at this point because uh, like it had bad reception when I tested it with the original stereo and it's still quite bad. I don't know where the aerial on this is though. Could even be the tuner and the stereo that I just put in as well. We don't know if that's any good. Okay, that's the stereo side of things done. Next step is running wires all the way back to the boot where I'm gonna be putting the amp. And also getting a wire through this firewall here. You can see a grommet, here's the battery. You can see a grommet just through there. Can you see that in the very back? I'm gonna try and go through that grommet. Four gauge wire. So I need to start taking some of, uh, more of this all apart. Take this foot piece thing here down, the kick panel, the side trim, the seat forward. Maybe try and get this uh, rear quarter panel side thing off. 
Looks like it won't be too hard. This car is mostly held together with Phillips screws. And then getting the wire through the boot here. That's the factory CD changer, by the way. I hope maybe if I take this, whoop. See, this is just sitting loose here. Oh. Wonder where any, if any wiring comes through anyway. Not sure. Hope to find a way. Two hours later. Okay guys, jeez, it is, that's the reason I'm not wearing my overalls, it is hot, like it's meant to get to 30 today, it's currently 27, I think I'm starting to glisten a wee bit, but um, yep, no, got all the wire running done, front to back, it's done, I know where I'm putting my amplifier, which I'll show you in a second, and just up here, here's my fuse holder situation, so the power wire comes out of the grommet through there, if it would focus on the right point, yep, so it comes out of there, I got a cable tie around it there, one handed I might add, <laughs> and then it just loops up to the fuse holder, which I, all I did was just used a little bolt, mount it through a spare hole there, and then it comes down, goes through that clip, and then this is obviously going to just go boom, straight onto the battery, which is there. That's how that side of things is done. Everything is uh, just ran in the fa with the factory loom down the left hand side. Now disclaimer, because I know some of you guys out there are going to be like, oh you can't run the RCAs and the power wire together. If you're talking about a, a full range speaker amplifier, like a speaker amp, yes you're correct because it can pick up engine noise and other noises coming from the car. When you're talking about a subwoofer, you actually can. You can run them next to each other because the types of frequencies that it would pick up in a car are so high that they would get cut out by the filter on the amplifier anyway and the subwoofer wouldn't end up making those sounds. So because I'm dealing with such low frequencies, subwoofer frequencies, you can run the RCAs alongside the power wire, so it's no problem. I've done it so many times and never had an issue. But, and yes I have, what did I do? I think I learned really quickly that you can't run a power wire next to your RCAs. Before I even worked here I installed a four channel amp in my car, um, real, real nastily because I didn't know what I was doing. And I ran the power wire with the RCAs. And yes, I got accelerator wine. I could accelerate and make my tweeters go wee. But um, doing it with the subwoofer wires, not a problem. Never had any issues. So yeah, RCAs just duck across, loop down. Everything just runs inside the clips. Factory loom all the way back. Hopefully you guys can see through there. And then it just kind of shoots into the boot there. And unfortunately there isn't much panelling in the car, like this stuff here is literally just like some foam material, but it, the wiring is basically all just ran straight down the corner and then pops up there, around and out there. And that is where I'm going to be mounting my amp, so this here is the, factory, is the CD changer, the factory one, and this panel sits over top of this device of whatever. Honestly don't know what it is. Grant reckons it might be a vacuum pump for the central locking. I don't I don't know. It could be could be a fuel pump for all I know. I don't know anything about mechanics. But anyway, CD changer sits on top of that and at first I thought oh, that's gonna be kind of flimsy, this is just like plastic. But then I found realized that it's not just bolted to plastic. It's actually a big where is it? Or no, am I mistaken? Oh no, it is just bolted to plastic. I thought there was a bracket in here. What I might do is make a metal bracket or something under here to strengthen it up because the reason it was just flopping around was because these screw holes here, they line up with those screw holes there, but nothing was, they weren't screwed in. I don't know why, but um, so that's why it's flopping around. But I think I am going to try and mount the amplifier on top of there so it will sit up here. And it's the exact same size as the CD changer, so it's gonna be perfect. But I might just have to do a bit of uh, work to make this sort of the mounting a bit stronger. We'll see what I can do. So that's what I'm going to be working on now. I'm going to take the CD changer off and see how I can mount the amplifier to that panel. And I might even, um, I'm thinking I might even put some riv nuts in the wall over there in those screw holes. And then that way I can put some actual proper like maybe six millimeter bolts through these holes and it'll be a lot stronger. That's what I think I'd like to do. Yes. All right, cool. Change it off of here. Hopefully this, oh no, it's spinning. Pretty cool. Okay, there's the panel off. Don't know why there's only three holding it in, not four, but anyway. So, that is the top of our panel, and actually, it is a good point that we would, if we're gonna mount this to here, and then wire it all up, 
it needs to be raised up so we can get through to get to these screw holes to secure this panel back on or I have to put this on the back on the car and then mount the amplifier to this hmm let's get the amp out where are the mounting points for this amplifier oh I see you take these two screws out the top at the front and the top comes off anyway this way the amplifier could not fit more perfectly looks perfect but we do need to have room for the wires to come out so it may have to hmm let's take the top off this okay so the controls are at this side by the uh, terminals hey I wonder what type that base remote thing we've got has I just discovered that we actually have this Alpine base remote in stock and I think it's actually meant to go with this. That plugs into there. It's the Alpine AUX-KNOB, AUX knob. Doesn't actually say what amplifiers it's compatible with, but I would say that given it's the same connection and it's mate, it's like an Alpine one, and we've got it, I'd say that we got it in for this amplifier. I might install this. I'd have to run the wire, obviously, which is annoying, but I think it'd be worth it. I'll do that. So the question is, how do I want to do all the mounting? Is it gonna be easier to mount this to the panel and then all of it to the car or mount the panel to the car and then this to here i think it's going to be easier to mount the panel to the car with some screws and then to make it stronger and then mount this to here how am i going to do the wiring as well because the wires have to be able to escape somehow almost need this whole section here to be gone to allow the wires to go down that's really annoying unless i can make the wires come out of here in this gap and then I can just shove it as far that way as I can that might be a good idea how big are the RCA heads I've got these RCA, that's the input quick question is how quickly can these RCA heads turn a corner they are a wee bit they're gonna be the, th the thing that makes it hard might need some right angle RCA adapters because I just I really don't want to put it this way and then have the wires coming out here and looping down into there that would look awful I think, but I really don't want to have it having to sit forward like that because I feel like it would just annoy my OCD. If I can get it to sit all the way back like that, it'll look so good. So I think what I'm going to do, I need to mark on here, I think I'm going to cut a section of plastic out of the underside of here to allow all the wires to go up through and into the amplifier. And then as I'm mount mounting it to the car, I'm going to have to slowly slot it all back in. I want the wires to go straight down there. It fits on here so perfectly. Okay, so I'm going to try and mount the amplifier on here as far back as I can and I'll mount the panel to the car first and then screw this on or nut and bolt or something but um, what I'm going to do for the wiring is I'm going to cut some sections out of the floor of it for the wires, for the power wires and subwoofer wire to duck straight out the bottom and then for the, and same for the base remote control or the driller wee hole but then for the RCA since the heads are quite big I'm going to um, to do is if I position the amp like this far enough along where the input RCAs miss this hole and I'll be able to cut a section of plastic out of the back of here so that they can come back a wee bit further and then drop down. So I'll use my Dremel and cut some pieces out. What I'm going to do though also is uh, I'm going to position this and then mark along here where I need to cut holes though so I'll do that now. Okay guys so I've uh, cut all those holes out you see we got Speaker wires, one there for the base remote, a hole for the RCAs and the power earth and, and remote. And that's gonna just, just gonna sit like that. And it, the RCAs do stick out just a tiny bit more like than I would prefer. Like I could really just pinch them like that and tighten it up, but instead what I'm gonna do is use these brass spacers that were actually underneath this thing. And I'm just gonna put them there between the plastic and the wall that it's gonna screw to. And that's gonna be enough to allow these RCAs just to bend around and get away to safety. So I'm gonna space it out, basically off the wall just by a little bit. And that'll do the trick. So what I need to do now is put this back on the wall. Actually I need to do an, uh, I need to run the remote, base remote cable and some subwoofer wiring first and then I can put this back on the car and then secure the amp to this. And what I'm probably gonna do, I'm not gonna be able to use nut and bolt, nuts and bolts to secure the amp to this because I can't get to the underside of it once this is secured on, obviously. 
So what I think I'll do is I'm going to glue some speed clips or something to the underside of this to act as a nut for some self tappers. Yeah, I think I'll try that. One hour later. Okay, so I've uh, run the subwoofer wire and the bass remote cable and I've also installed the bass remote which I'll show you in a second. And I have put some speed clips oops, on the bottom of here and secured them with duct tape and that's just going to be enough to hold them there while I'm threading the screws through the amplifier, through the plastic and into them and they're going to act like as little nuts just to keep it secure. And I've also fixed up this corner, kind of, because um, I don't know if you can see it but that whole corner was cracked off. So I've just put some duct tape there to hold it in the meantime so that when I put it all back on the car it kind of holds its shape a wee bit but I don't expect it to do any help with support. So uh, let's try to put this on the car now. All these, oh I haven't done a ground, crap I need to do that real quick. Okay now I've done my ground which by the way is just this big fat bolt at the end here of ground all the paint off of that, that piece of metal there is part of the body so that's gonna work good. Okay let's try to put this piece of plastic on somehow. So I have to start feeding wires through all of their holes, like earth is on that side there. Remote goes through this one here. Remote, SEAs, and then the speaker wires, which positive is on the outside. That's the positive wire there. Okay, get this right. That positive, okay. Negative, positive, sweet. All the wires are through their holes. And I've got to line this all up and get this back on. Yeah. Let's try to get some screws through these bottom two and then the top ones. Okay, that is pretty damn secure, so I'm happy with that. So I can probably now try and get the amp in. So just make sure we've got everything here. So we've got a remote earth and power. I'm not going to be able to shove in here. Just need to make sure I can still shove the excess down. Speaker wise, okay, so I'm probably going to have to do the tuning. Just need to make sure I tune it on the amp here now. Again, the base EQ is going to be off. I'm going to put the low pass filter at 180, but then I'll adjust the low pass filter on the head unit as well. Maybe I should do, no, I'll do it 120, because that's good for a 10. And then base EQ will be off. Gain will be to probably left at nominal. And subsonic filter, it's a 10 inch sub, so I'm going to put it, I'll just put it to 20 hertz. 12 seconds later. All right guys, sorry to jump ahead, but uh, yeah, the amplifier is in and mounted. Looking good. Push pretty much right up against the wall and it ain't going anywhere. Cool. So now I can put that cover thing on it. Do you have to screw it on for the connection side? I think you do. Oh, that's annoying. Um, obviously I can't attach it then. And there's no way I'm gonna get those little screws in behind there. I guess the thing to have done, oh no wait, I couldn't have uh, put this on and then mounted it because I have to get to the screws which are under here. Okay, I'm gonna try and find a way to secure that. I might just use some like sticky tape or something, some double-sided, because, yeah. Okay, I think I've got a solution sorted. So I've put a piece of foam tape along here, which is just gonna act as a bit of a damper and kind of keep the, um, the panel that goes on top pushed this way. And that's what you want, because that's gonna lock it into this tooth here and stop it from coming up. And I've also got on top four of these nice uh, 3M sticker things which are gonna kind of stick it down. The other thing I've done is I've also stuck on the Alpine sticker that it comes with. Focus. Uh, there's not enough light. There we go. I like how it uh, comes with the Alpine sticker separately so that you can uh, stick it the right way up, like whatever way you have the amp orientated. So that's quite cool that they do that. But I'm not gonna put the panel on yet because I've yet to put the subwoofer in the box and uh, position it and listen and I want to tune the gains uh, tune the gain and make sure it's sounding good before I stick the lid down. So I'm just going to stick this in here for now and my next step will probably be putting the subwoofer in the box and getting that wired up. But the camera's low on battery, I'm starving, I haven't had lunch yet so I'm going to stop and charge the camera and have some lunch and come back to it after that. But anyway here's, an, here's how Grant's um, going. For the woofer, um, unfortunately with the thickness of the woofers that were in there and the ones that were going that we're putting in, uh, there was not enough room for the factory grills to go back on. So we just found these uh, nice Focal ones which actually fit the car really, really well. And he's just secured that in there with four dabs of RTV just to <coughs> glue it in. And it looks really good. I think the black actually isn't too standoutish. And for the tweeter, oh cool. So he's just mounted the tweeter into the factory location of the original. How'd you, was it just hot glue and RTV? Mm -hmm. Yep, 
Yep, that'll work. Sweet. And the crossover on this side, he tells me he has got uh, cable tied up behind this metal panel here. So the wiring would have gone from the head unit up to the factory tweeter input, which he has then rerouted to the crossover. And then the wire that came out of the tweeter, which went to the woofer, is now going to the crossover as well. So it was quite good having all the wiring in one location and then just securing the crossover behind there. And I think he's working on the driver's side woofer at the moment. All right, sweet, lunch time. Two thousand years later. Okay, guys, there we go. Sorry to jump ahead again, but um, while the battery was charging, I got pretty much the, I got the whole car put back together and pretty much everything buttoned up in the uh, boot. Subwoofer is in its box and everything like that. It's all wired up and going. I um, put a, I drilled a new hole, put a new piece of wire through, put a cable tie around it so it can't go back through, and then sealed it all up with RTV so that it can't leak. And then I put that Dacron back in there nice and evenly. Put the sub in with some new screws and it sounds like it's going good. I um, just haven't put the cover back on the amp yet because I want to do a final listening uh, test before I put it on and stick it down. By the way, I never really showed you what I did up the front. Oh, I did show you the fuse holder, which is there on its bolt. That uh, power wire then goes down, loops in, and where it's bolted on, that was an empty bolt hole, just like the negatives there, there was an empty one. So I found a spare M6 bolt and just bolted it on without having to undo anything, so that worked well. Put this cover thing back on, it doesn't really fit. I don't know if it's meant to go on this car or what, but here we go. Whoa, Grant's all done over the driver's side. Don't really know where we put the crossover, but I saw him taking all sorts of stuff apart. Woofer looks good. Tweeter's hidden up under there. We're all good and going, let's have a listen. Get shit out of the way. Now I probably want to do this with the boot closed because I'm pretty sure we got as much gain as we're ever going to need. I haven't touched the gain on the um, on the amp. It's still set to what it comes factory, which is nominal. We're gonna need any more gain on the amp. <laughs> That's still at nominal, so um, I think Grant's gonna try and fix the number plate. So I just need to put the lid on the amp. Let me just explain how I've done that, doing that again since I can't get the screws into it since they're at the back. Got that piece of foam tape there which is like acts as a little bit of a, just a bit of friction against the side and it holds it this way because there's this tooth here that it has to lock into. And then I've got four little adhesive pads on top of which I can take off now. Right, so now this, is to go, is to slot down like that, and then that. There we go. And it's good as well because those adhesives in the foam tape are going to stop that, uh, stop this lid from rattling since it isn't secured with bolts. That's going to work well. Not just mounted under there. Nice. So that's it, guys. The CDA 9887 is installed. I can't remember the exact code of those speakers, but it was along the lines of uh, Alpine. Uh, what was it? I feel like there's a K in it. KLX77 something. I can't remember, sorry. But there were 17, 17 centimeter Type X uh, two way components. An old style Alpine Type R 10 inch subwoofer and a brand new Alpine PDR M65 one, uh, monoblock amplifier to power it 
sounding real good. Thank you guys for watching. If you didn't see the video where I took all of this stuff out of an MR2, click the link up in this corner and make sure you subscribe to my channel because I've still got uh, this lady's two PDX amplifiers to install it to a Jaguar later on. So thank you guys for watching. Choose to be happy and I will catch you in the next video. Kakitano.